Uh, welcome again to this uh, late night uh, presentation. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we have finally made it to be able to present by God's grace. He has held up the reins so that uh, we may have this time together and uh, see what the Lord is speaking to us. In the last presentation, which uh, I made uh, on the, the financial crisis we are facing and the looming labor unions, I was able to go through the history and share with us some materials on what is happening and the chaos, the rioting and all this stuff that we are seeing happen in different countries in Africa and around the world and the failing of the banks. But uh, there, there, there's no uh, profit in only pointing out at the problems. And that is why you are having uh, my background there with um, uh, a man having an umbrella. And why is it so? In, in this crisis, uh, we we need to have a financial umbrella. And that is uh, what exactly I want us to look at. How do we have the financial umbrella in this crisis that we are having when you see that um, all the national uh, uh, security exchange, everything is failing and the, the, the euro is getting high and the dollar is getting high and the other uh, 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 systems are falling apart due to inflation and recession. What uh, are we going to do at the end of the day? Let us pray as we look into this session. Dear God in heaven, thank you for your mercy and do it forevermore. Lord, we may mourn all through the night, but in the morning there comes joy. And we know that uh, the afflictions of the present cannot be compared to the future glory which shall be revealed very soon when Christ comes in the clouds of the air. And so I pray that uh, we may, Lord, surrender our hearts, that we may understand what you are doing, that uh, your son is pleading for us. And at the end of the day, whatever thing that we go through, help us to go through it courageously. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, so we, we need uh, a financial umbrella at the end of the day and how do we get this umbrella? First of all, uh, I'll read something in my Bible, something that uh, is familiar with us in the book of uh, Romans, chapter 12. Romans uh, Romans chapter, sorry. The book of Romans. Chapter 13, verses 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So we are being admonished to all, no one, anything apart from uh, the date of love. And that is what we want to be found in. That is the status we want to be in when Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. So uh, without uh, so much uh, storytelling, what are we going to do with this crisis that is before us? And uh, the solution is simple, as you see, living within our means. And uh, living within our means is not just uh, some sort of uh, social and physical stability but also it has it is spiritual implications because uh, where your riches is, that is where your heart is. And that is why Christ tells us um, that um, let us store our wealth and riches in heaven where the worms and the moths cannot reach or the caterpillar and the canker worms cannot destroy. We want our means, we want our hearts to be where our means are and uh, we want our means to be where our hearts are. And the only place that you can invest and not have a financial meltdown and not have um, a bank uh, a failure is in the work of the Lord. But uh, how do we come to reach to this status of storing where actually um, it cannot be taken uh, from us or it cannot be destroyed? Uh, I'll go through the inspiration so much. Uh, I won't go to the Bible. You can uh, 
look into your Bible, the, the God's economy in the book of Genesis, um, um, Genesis chapter 2, there we have God's economy, uh, what we call the Edenic economy and butter trade and living within uh, what we call um, an ecosystem that cannot be break in, broken by any uh, of these world barriers. And um, we have what uh, Joseph was in Egypt that uh, everyone has to be, every seventh day Adventist has to be what Joseph was in Egypt, that um, we have to come to a point that when there is the money fails, we can still coexist with uh, our ecosystem where we can plant our own things and do butter trade, do an exchange before we get into the time of trouble, which has never been since the nation was. And then God takes over according to Isaiah chapter 33, verse 16, that your bread and your water shall be sure. But before then, what can we do? Um, we are told that um, uh, what we should be striving to do is to live within our means. In Adventist homepage 368, paragraph 2, in our use of money, we can make it an agent of spiritual improvement by regarding it as a sacred trust, not to be employed to administer to pride, vanity, appetite, or passion. Independence of one kind continued in Adventist homepage 374, paragraph 1. Independent of one kind is praiseworthy to desire to bear your own weight and not to eat the bread of dependence is right. It is a noble, generous ambition that dictates the wish to be self-supporting. Industrious habits and frugality are necessary. Now, there's something I want to talk about living within our means connected to the day that we are living in, which is the day of atonement. Um, Many of uh, the families that we have actually, we have failed in one way or another. If uh, you go to the Jewish history and the Jewish background, every father taught their child some trade to do. Apart from just seeking a job to be employed, every parent had to teach a child some industrial work that uh, they may not be dependent but they may be independent. And uh, that industrial work is what enabled the youths even to excel in the school of the prophets because they were taught every kind of uh, trade that they can engage in. The reason why the world is crying and uh, Seventh-day Adventists also are crying is because we have been educated in a system that is of dependence you go to school and out of school, you wait for somebody to employ you instead of the parents taking the initiative to be able to train up their children so that when the money fails, they can be able to still coexist without uh, so much trouble as the world is uh, uh, facing. We shouldn't be crying as the world cries because we are the children of the light and not the children of the darkness, but we have turned ourselves to be the children of darkness in so much that the children of the world are more wiser than the children of God, which is something that uh, is really surprising. Another thing is that we are in the day of atonement and in the day of atonement in Leviticus chapter 23, there is what we call job reformation, job reformation. Uh, in the day of atonement, all the Israelites were to be gathered around the sanctuary, at least involved in the work that. Uh, corresponded with the day that they were living in, corresponding with um, the description of what the priest was doing. And so we are told that in the day of atonement, we are not supposed to do survival work. We are not just supposed to do any kind of work. The work that we do, some wish it should be connected to the third angel's message. And we are told that in every line of business, whatever it is, we must... Uh, uh, do a job that is connected to the spreading of the third angel's message, be it mechanic, be it carpentry, masonry, plumbing, be it publishing, cloth, um, uh, cloth making, embroidery, and all this stuff should be connected with the third angel's message. Per se, it should help us to coexist 
and not um, uh, exorbitant and uh, luxurious life living in so much that uh, what the world is doing is what should be found being done among us. When um, you read the um, manuscript releases, uh, volume one, one MR 228.1, we are told that uh, God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to prepare a people stand true to him during investigative judgment. That is why we establish our hygienic restaurant, our food factories, our publishing houses, and our sanitarium. And every line of work should be done in line with this purpose. So we will have our caves, cafeterias, we will have our publishing houses, we will have our computers running, we will have uh, our, our sanitarium running and hygienic restaurants. In this, we will be able to get money to help us exist and also uh, be a means of reaching others. We should be having food factories. Uh, that is one uh, purpose why God uh, uh, gave the third angel's message. And you cannot have a food factory uh, without a farm. We need to own farms so that uh, various people are reproducing various things to um, exchange to the other. As I said, that we should be having an ecosystem where if I'm producing something else, something another person is producing something else and another person is producing something else and we can share amongst us without uh, uh, buying and selling. That is what we call an ecosystem, an Edenic type of uh, ecosystem. And so, this can only be achieved if uh, we come the, become the children of light and not the children of this world. Uh, educate our people to get out of the cities into the country where they can obtain a small piece of land and make a home for themselves and their children. Adventist homepage 373, paragraph two. Now, we are neglecting this thing, but uh, in the crisis that is looming, uh, the Lord has shown us something in the book of Isaiah, chapter. Is it chapter 13, the book of Isaiah chapter 13? There is a glimpse in what is coming to happen in the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 13. If we don't take the heed to heed the message of country living, this is what shall uh, for, befall upon us. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 17 says, Behold, I'll stir up the meats against them which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdom, the beauty of the child is excellent. It shall be as even when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And then uh, it, when you go back to verses uh, 11, talking about the scenario that happens with the Medes when they were attacking Babylonians and what will play in the end times. Isaiah chapter 13 from verse 11 says, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and I'll cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold, golden wage of a field. Therefore, I'll shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chest row and as a ship that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. While they are fleeing, verse 15 says, everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So, if we are not taking seriously this message of country living and taking the umbrella that is behind me for financial stability, then brothers and sisters, we shall be overtaken by the sword when the crisis breaks out of the cities we are told and we are 170 plus years behind. So educate our people to get out of the cities into the country where they can obtain a small piece of land and make a home for themselves and um, their children. And by the way, you can look at our website uh, what we are trying to do and um, come up with um, the story garden so that uh, even somebody who doesn't possess a land, somebody who doesn't possess a land can be able to 
to have something if, uh, just to within um, their, um, their, their places, they can have something. And uh, uh, I don't know if uh, I can be able to show you something. Yes. Now, we have embarked on as a ministry and as a family to educate people on what we call having multi-story gardens. And um, in this, this is uh, the things that uh, we teach the people to make their, they, they don't need a land. Let me say that even if you have a small compound, you can be able to have these things placed uh, in your compound. And then um, you can be able to grow your food you know, sometimes when um, we speak about the message of country living, we make it as if people should be having billions and millions to be able to move to the country and live there and do some farming. The, the, the quotes you read in E.G. White about having chunks of lands, they are connected to sanitariums. They are connected to hygienic restaurants and uh, uh, these big institutions. But for a family moving in the country, you don't need a big chunk of land. What will you be doing with a big chunk of land, you and your wife and a child? You cannot cultivate all of it. You just need a small place and maximize the usability of that place to be able to reproduce what um, you need. And so we have embarked on uh, being able to do such a work that uh, you are seeing so that people may be able to uh, have uh, uh, small farms and these farms they can be able to uh, reproduce more than uh, you may think of and so think about it that um, even a place of 20 by 20 you will be able to have your farm there so educate again our people to get out of the cities into the country where they can obtain a small piece of land and make a home for themselves and uh, their children the sense of being owners of their own homes will inspire them with a strong desire for improvement. They will soon acquire skill in planning and devising for themselves. Their children will be educated in habits of industry and economy, and uh, the intellect will be greatly strengthened. They will feel that they are men, not slaves, and will be able to regain to a greater degree their lost self-respect and moral independence. In that uh, small book, a uh, compilation that masterpiece can reliving. We are told that mothers, that is fathers and mothers who own a piece of land uh, and utilize it, use make of it, they live like kings and queens during this uh, small time of trouble. But um, when uh, we read these things, they seem like uh, a song to us. And we are like those children in Jeremiah who are saying that we came to the markets marketplace. We helped, we sang, but you did not respond to it. We read these quotes and they have become songs sung to us. We say, oh, the Lord knows uh, and uh, he knows that I'm stranded and no, 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 no. The Lord knows you are stranded and he's telling you do something. He is able to help you come out of your strandedness. And um, be determined never to incur any debts. Deny yourself a thousand things rather than run in debt. This has been the curse of your life, getting into debt. Avoid it as you would the smallpox. Adventist homepage 393.4. Continued on in Proverbs 22, 7, we are told the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. And uh, I went through this yesterday in detail, how the World Bank and the IMF and the politicians have teamed together to borrow as much as they can and then to raise the taxes so that actually the people are being milked and they are not seeing the money that the World Bank and the IMF has given to their countries. Where is the money? Where that uh, is being given by these uh, big financial institutions? You will find that uh, a quarter of it is placed in the hands or in the, some few projects, but uh, three quarters of it goes into the pockets of the people. And we want to be sure that we are not dragged to the same system that the politicians are in. We want to be financial uh, independent. We don't want to be slaves to some person in this world. In Adventist homepage 393, paragraph five, um, 
make a solemn covenant with God that by his blessing you will pay your debts and then owe no man anything if you live on porridge and bread. It is so easy in preparing your table to throw out of your pocket 25 cents for extras. Take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of uh, themselves. It is the mites here and the mites there that are spent for this that end other that soon run up into dollars. Deny self at least while you are walled in debts. Do not falter, be discouraged or turn back. Deny your taste, deny the indulgence of appetite, save your pains and pay your debts. Work them off as fast as possible. When you can stand forth a free man again, owing no man anything will have achieved a great victory. You ought to be careful that your expenses do not exceed your income. Bind about your wants. AH 375.4. Again and again, we are told many, very many have not so educated themselves that they can keep their expenditures within the limit of their income. They do not learn to adapt themselves to circumstances and they borrow and borrow again and again and become overwhelmed in debt. And consequently, they become discouraged and disheartened. Now, you may say, you know, I don't have even the financial muscle to start anything small. And yes, we have seen even the prophet who died in the Bible and left debts behind and the Lord intervened for the wife and the children not to be taken away. Now, be sure if you are going to borrow, you will start something that will be able to pay that debt. Don't borrow to really buy unnecessary things. If you are going to do an investment, then do an investment. Don't, don't just go borrowing for doing some pleasure things that cannot uh, give back. The Lord has been uh, pleased to prevent before me the evils. Um, the Lord has been pleased to prevent before me the evil which result from spiritual habits that I might admonish parents to teach their children strict economy, teach them that money spent for that which they do not need is perverted from it is proper use. Money which is spent for that which they do not need is perverted from it is proper use. If you have extravagant habits, cut them away from your life at once. Unless you do this, you will be bankrupt for eternity. Habits of economy, industry, and sobriety are a better portion for your children than a rich uh, dowry. That is uh, what the Lord is instructing us at a such a time as this. In the crisis that we are living in, the Lord will want us to come out of it. Do not uh, educate your children to think that uh, your love for them must be expressed by indulgence of their pride. Extravagance and love of this place. There is no time now to invent ways for using up money. Use your inventive faculties in seeking to uh, seeking to economize. Again, uh, we are told that. Uh, Habits of self indulging or a want of trust and skill on the part of the wife and mother may be a constant drain upon the treasure. And yet, that mother may think she is doing her best because she has never been told to restrict her wants or the wants of her children and has never acquired skill and trust in household matters. Hence, one family may require that it is support twice the amount that will suffice for another family of uh, the same side. And uh, that is the biggest problem that we are having, that um, you find that uh, the money that is being used in one family is able to feed even three families. And uh, we look at these things and we wonder, are we really uh, doing the work of the Lord? Are we trying to deny ourselves or we are living in pleasure as the children of the world are living? We have minimum uh, time in this world and uh, whichever lifestyle that we choose, let us choose knowing that uh, the Lord will ask with the means that I gave unto you. How did you work out Isaiah chapter 58? Did you clothe the naked? Did you visit those who are in prison? Did you feed the hungry? You know, 
in the story of uh, the 10 comic virgin, the 10 virgins. We are told that um, at the end of it, the five, Christ told them, in as much as you did to these ones, you did it unto me. And uh, the money that the Lord has given unto us is not to be spent in uh, selfish uh, uh, gains, but it should be used in furthering his kingdom. Much might be said to the young people regarding their privilege to help the cause of God by learning lessons of economy and self denial. Many think that they must indulge in this pleasure and that, in order to do this, they accustom themselves to live up to the full extent of their income. God wants us to do better in this district. We sin against ourselves when we are satisfied with enough to eat and drink and wear. God has something higher than this before us. When we are willing to put away our selfish desires and give the powers of heart and mind to the work of the cause of God, heavenly agencies will cooperate with us, making us a blessing to humanity. Even though we may be poor, the youth who is industrious and economical can serve a little for the cause of God. Most the little outgoes in order to avoid the larger mix. Needless expenses are constantly brought about in your family management. Your wife likes to see her children raised in a manner beyond their means, and because of this, tests and habits are cultivated in your children, which will make them vain and proud. If you will learn the lesson of autonomy and see the very to yourself, and to your children, and to the cause of God in this free use of means, you will obtain an experience essential to the perfection of your Christian character. That is Arminic Point 375, paragraph 3. And so, as, uh, as we continue living upon the face of this world, one thing is clear, that uh, the Lord has blessed us not to gratify ourselves, but he has blessed us so that we may be a blessing to others. In Adventist form, page 375, paragraph 2. Adventist form, page 375, paragraph 2. We are pilgrims and strangers on the earth. Let us not spend our means in gratifying desires that God will have us replace. Let us simply represent our faith by restricting our wants. Again, we should learn to know when to spare and when to spend. We should reckon up all the little spend in self gratification We should notice what is used simply to gratify this pain in cultivating a perverted and appetite. The money expended for useless benefits might be used to add to your substantial home comforts and convenience. You are not to be penurious, you are to be honest with yourself and your brethren. Penuriousness is an abuse of God's boundaries. Lavishness is also an abuse. The need to out of our growth that we think for us not worth mentioning common to considerable things. So we may buy one thing here and one thing there. And we think that uh, because we are spending so little, then this does not add up something. But at the end of the year, if you add up all these things that we have been spending on, you will find that you have spent so much. And if you look back, this a lot of money that I have spent, where is there something to go of it? And we will be shocked with how much we spend on our airtime, how much we spend on our bundles, how much we spend on good phone, how much we spend on all this stuff, but they are not connected in any way in the spreading of the third English message. It is a time that every penny that we spend, we may ask ourselves, how is it benefiting from the third English message? How is this good form that I'm buying helping in the spreading of the third English message? How are these bundles and the airtime that I'm buying helping in spreading the third English message? These good furnishings that I'm having, how are they helping in the spreading of the third English message? If we can ask ourselves that question before we spend, then we shall invest where actually the moats, the caterpillars, and the canker ones can look with. Our means will be where our hearts are, and our hearts will be where our means are. And it will be good if our hearts and, our, and means are stored up in heaven. As I try to come to the end 
for uh, this presentation. Parents are to bring up and educate and train their children in habits of self control and self denial. They are ever to keep before them their obligation to obey the word of God and to live for the purpose of serving Jesus. They are to educate their children that there is need of living in accordance with simple habits in their daily life and to avoid expensive dress, expensive diet, expensive houses, and expensive furniture. Admit is from page 386, paragraph one. Dollars slip from your pocket very easily. Self denial is a lesson you could not have yet to learn. I heard it from page 376, paragraph two. And so, God is not honored when the body is neglected or abused and is thus unfitted for his service. To care for the body by providing to it food that is relishable and strengthening is one of the first duties of the household. It is far better to have less expensive clothing and furniture than to, than to steal the supply of food. So instead of spending in these things which are actually not helping our body to be in a state where it can comprehend the third angel's message is a waste of money. We should be helping um, with our money, we should be helping ourselves to spend where even we shall put our physical condition in a state where we can hear the voice of the Lord speaking unto us. We, we should be having uh, our expenditure uh, being on the direction that will help our atmosphere, our physical, and our social condition to be able to comprehend the third angel's message. Our economy must never be of that kind which will lead to proving mega needs. Students should have an abundance of wholesome food, but Lagos in charge of the food and gather up the government that nothing be lost. And uh, another thing which uh, I like to highlight in having the financial umbrella is this. All should learn how to keep accounts. Some neglect this work as an essential, but this is wrong. All expenses should be accurately stated. At least page 374, paragraph four. So Christ once gave his disciples a lesson upon economy, it is worth of careful attention. He wrote a miracle to feed the hundred thousand who had listened to his teachings, yet after all the patent and were satisfied, he did not permit the problem to be wasted. He who could, in their necessity, keep the vast amount of by his divine power, bade his disciples gather up the fragment that nothing might be lost. This lesson was given as much for our benefit as for those living in Christ's day. The Son of God must have care for the necessities of temple life. He did not neglect the broken fragment after the feast, although he, although he could make such a feast whenever he chose. Now, as a medical missionary, we always say there is nothing to be wasted apart from the nylon paper. That is a phrase we always have as medical missionaries. Nothing is to be wasted unless it is a plastic bag. Whatever that is in your hands should be used maximally. We should learn the lessons of frugality so that uh, even if uh, there is fragment in uh, what you have prepared, and uh, you have shared with your neighbors, but they still something remaining, and maybe it has gone bad. It can be at the end of the day used as fertilizer. It can be at the end of the day used as something useful in uh, your garden. So we should all be learning about uh, how do we use even the waste that we are having for our food stuff if uh, there are such uh, things. The lessons of Jesus Christ are to be carried into every case of practical life. Economy is to be practiced in all things. Gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. There is a religion that does not fight the heart and therefore becomes a form of work. It is not brought into practical life. Religious duty and the highest human freedom is business line, in business lines must be for mingled. The Lord will have his feet to thoughtful and caretaking. He will have them study economy and everything and waste nothing. The amount daily spend in needless things with the thought, it is only a nickel, it is only a dime, seems very little, but multiply these little by the days of the years, 
And as the years go by, the area of figures will seem almost incredible. And in some in one that is the top paragraph one. I will not intend you to be to know what happens. It will be difficult for you to do this, but I will counsel you both to extend your money carefully and help your daily example of cheap lessons of frugality, self denial, and economy to your children. They need to be educated by precept and example. So, as even God himself was in charge of Adam and uh, Eve, us as parents, we should be in charge of our children. What do we give them? How do they spend? What do they need in the future? Let us not only live for the present, but also let us live for the future. And that future is not on this earth, but the future we are talking about is in heaven. And those who do not live for self will not use up every dollar meeting their supposed wants, but um, they only supply what is convenient and will bear in mind that they are Christ followers and Christ will not live for himself, but uh, really he lived for others. And so um, in Adventist 1, page 372, again, we are not uh, putting a curse on money. Money is not necessarily a curse. It is of high value because if rightly appropriated, it can do good in the salvation of souls, in blessing others who are poorer than ourselves. By an improvident or unwise use, money will become a snare for the use. He who employs money to gratify pride and ambition makes it a curse rather than a blessing. Money is a constant taste of the affections. Whoever acquires more than sufficient for his real needs to seek wisdom and grace to know his own heart and to keep his heart diligent, lest he have imaginary ones and become an unfair steward, unfaithful steward, losing with for the jealousy his lords and trusted capital. And uh, the last slides. When we love God supremely, temporal things will occupy their right place in our affections. If we humbly and honestly seek for knowledge and ability in order to make a right use of our Lord's good, we shall receive wisdom from above. That is Advent from page 372, paragraph 2. And so God has a solution for us in these things. God has a solution for us in these things. And even in uh, doing away with the things we don't need, he has said, if we humble ourselves, and seek him in prayer, he will show us when to sell and at how much we should sell what we are having. And so let us give our hearts to the Lord. Let us make sure that every move that we are making is ordained by the Lord. And let us understand we are in the day of atonement where we don't have to be involved in every work, but we are only required to be involved in the work that it is part of the third angel's message. And we should be learning to live in an ecosystem where we can do better trade and not depend on the finances of this world. Otherwise, may you purchase your financial umbrella. It is not expensive. It is just by hearkening to the voice of the Lord and uh, seeking him in prayer and he will be able to order your steps. Otherwise, the Lord will bless us. And uh, may we continue seeking the welfare of others rather than seeking the welfare of ourselves. I'd like to end this presentation with uh, this uh, very beautiful two verses. In the book of uh, Malachi chapter three, in the book of uh, Malachi chapter three, we are told this as we bring this to a close. Then they that feared the Lord, Malachi 3, 16, spake one, often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that called upon his name. And then in uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25, 24 and 25, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, we read this. 
from verses 23 in Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So, as uh, Seventh day Adventist, let us try to reach out to each other. Let us know what is my brother doing? What is my sister doing? Where do they need help? Uh, and uh, what are they having that I do not have? What am I having that they do not have? And how can we make use of these things by exchanging ideas, exchanging what we have, and uh, move as the children of God, not actually being independent atoms and uh, living selfishly. You know, back in the 18, uh, 1880s and uh, 1950s, there was something that the Second Day Adventist started to help others move to the country. And the brethren came together, they were able to gather finances, they were able to gather properties, they were able to gather what their brethren needed and relocate them to the areas where they could subsist without depending on the governments of the day for their subsistence. We should, as Seventh-day Adventists, start thinking in those lines that uh, what our, are our brethren in towns doing? How can we help them move out of the town? How can we spare a place for them to do something beneficial and be able to share in the blessings of the third angel's message? Until we have such a mind of trying to relocate our brethren who are stuck in town, helping our neighbors who cannot put something on the table, teaching them lessons of frugality and economic uh, dependence, we will not be really proclaiming the third angel's message. You know, we are stuck in this thing of uh, looking in what the Pope is doing. No, God is not concerned with, even with what the Pope is doing. God is concerned with how are his people preparing for the great events before them. And so he is using men and women to make sure that um, the church moves as a unit and not each one moving his own way. That is why even we are told, when we are going to come to living, let two or three families come together and go to a place, establish them there, themselves there, and do something that... Uh, will show that the Lord is working amongst them and let others do that in various places. But uh, we are filled with selfishness. Today, somebody will go alone. Another day, another person will go alone in Rwanda. Does these recommendations that God gave through inspiration of none effects amongst us? Otherwise, let us think about these things. I know the Lord wants to bless us and he is pouring out his latter rain to people. It may be falling, where you are, but you may not be participating in it. Let us be careful. Let us uh, be able to be attentive enough to grasp spiritual things. Otherwise, as you see the economy scrambling down, as you see the rioting, as you see the banks failing, ask yourself, what does this mean to me, to my neighbor, to my family, and to the whole church? And uh, after seeking the Lord in prayer, do what the Lord tells you to do. And uh, he says in Psalms 121 that uh, he who watches Israel will not sleep or slumber. He will guide your feet. I look up into my heaven, into heavens. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And let us put your prayer. Let me that my prayer. And if we hold our hands together, we shall be able to do that which one hand cannot do. Otherwise, blessings. And may the Lord continue ministering the spirit unto us that as even the spiritual things are spiritual design, we may be spiritual so that we may understand spiritual things. Otherwise, let us close with our other prayer. Father, again, we say thank you. And uh, even though the rain has been outpouring, but Lord, you have allowed the message to go forth. And so I pray that uh, we may be united in spirit. We may be united in social and in physical ways that we may be able to help each other. Help us not only to preach in words, 
that help us to preach also in deeds. And uh, Father, help us to live a selfless life. Crucify every selfish ambition in our life that we may think about others than we think of ourselves. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so that is it. May the Lord bless you until another late night presentation. God bless and goodbye to you.